Thank you, Jesus. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16. 1 Chronicles chapter 16. I want you to look at the text that is given in hand. Yeah. Praise God. It reads as such, beginning in verse number 23. He says, Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Do I got any saved people in here? Yeah. Well, we are given an assignment by the Holy Ghost that we are to declare his salvation day to day. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. I don't think we got that. And this is why you, you must know the reason why he called you out of the darkness of this world and brought you into his marvelous light. Amen. That we might show forth from day to day his salvation. Did you not know there are people out in the world that need to see that Jesus saves? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's a lot of people that have given up hope. They don't believe that Jesus is real. They don't believe that Jesus saves because they're looking at them who call themselves a child of God, but yet they live in worse than the sinner. Come on, somebody. We are supposed to show from day to day the salvation of our God. And I believe that when we are saved, we're supposed to live a saved life. God's people are called to sanctification. And we are not to be un not to be e unequally yoked. We're not to be yoked together with the unbeliever. Amen. We ought to be set apart unto God to live by his word. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. He says sing unto the Lord all the earth. Did you see that? He says sing unto the Lord. Now he's talking to holy people. He's not talking to people that just want to sing. He's talking to people that are consecrated and that submit themselves wholeheartedly to obey his word. Come on tonight. Then he says in verse 24, declare his glory among the heathen. The heathen is speaking of the unbeliever. The unbeliever needs to see that the God of Israel is real. Hello? And that he has power to redeem a life of sin. But how are they going to behold that when the saints of God show from day to day his salvation? Come on. This is why living holy is so important. This is why we must take heed to the things that are contained in the pages of scripture and follow through as God has commanded. Come on somebody. As children of the Most High God, them that name the name Jesus Christ, we must separate ourselves from this wicked world. Amen. Yes, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. 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 He says again in verse 24, declare his glory among the heathen. How many know he that believeth shall not be ashamed? There should not be one believer in Christ Jesus that's ashamed of Jesus Christ. Because I come to tell you that when he was hanging half naked upon the cross at Calvary, he was not ashamed of you. And the apostle says in 1 Corinthians, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto everyone that believe, to the Jew first and unto the Greek, which is the Gentile. Amen. 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 Praise God. He goes on to say in verse 25, for great is the Lord and is greatly to be praised. 
How many know you're not praising them the way you, you can praise them? Come on. You ain't praising them like you know you can praise them. Praise God. They may have eyes. 
but they can't see. They may have ears, but they can't hear. They may have a mouth, but they can't speak. Hello, somebody. All the gods of the heathens are nothing but dumb idols. Hello, somebody. But the God of Israel, he created the heavens and the earth. Come on, somebody. Saints of God, we should be looking broke, 
busted and disgusted. We should be looking sad, mad, and they might be being had. Hey, talk about somebody. Are you listening to me? Listen to what the text said. He said, glory and honor in his presence, strength and gladness are in his place. Now, I know we go through things in this life, but God has given us everything we need to overcome the trials, the tribulations that we encounter as we make our journey toward the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. to the Lord, you kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice in the text, he's speaking to the children of Israel. He's instructing them to give yeah. to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What did he say they should give to God in the text? That they should give glory and strength. But if you go back to verse Seven. He said, glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Hallelujah. So God expects you to acquire these things so that you can give him what he wants. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. See, there's no excuse for us. Amen. There's no excuse for us. God has already made it available. Yeah. But because of our ignorance and because of Laziness. That's why we are empty. That's why we are dry. That's why we don't have what we need in order to be a praiser, a giver, the way that God desires that we give to Him. He said, Give unto the Lord, you kindreds of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Hallelujah. Is that what the text said? Amen. You know, I'm reminded what Jesus said. He said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Why is it more blessed to give than to receive? Because the giver always has something to give. Amen. Amen. It's, it's a blessing to be a receiver, but it's more of a blessing to be a giver because the giver always has Now, it's something where you don't never have anything. That's a whole other story. It is something when you don't never have anything. Hallelujah. You always got your hand out. You will never have nothing to give to nobody. You're just a taker. Take, take, take. Never give or anything. I come to tell you, it's more blessed to be a giver than a Amen. Amen. This is why the text says, give unto the Lord. And I'm going to know, you can't be stingy when it comes to God. Amen. 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 For God give it, and God sure can take it away from you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Is that what the text says in the book of Job? <laughs> Glory to God. But he said, give unto the Lord, you kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. He said, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Come on. Now that word due means you owe. Amen. You owe. You ain't going to never stop owing. You're going to always owe God. Hallelujah. We are in we are in eternally indebted to him. Amen. Amen. Have you forgot what he did for you? Amen. He paid the debt that none of us could pay. Amen. Amen. And he sent his only begotten son as a ransom for many to pay our sin debt. A debt that we could not pay. So therefore, when you get saved, you become eternally indebted to him. That's why we always owe him. Give unto the Lord the glory that is due unto his name. And you want to know when it's due? All the time. It's due every single day. 
every single second, every single minute, every single hour, we owe God. We owe him. Are you listening? We owe him our gratitude. We owe him submit, being submissive to him. We owe him obeying his voice. We owe him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I owe him. And I'm thankful that he sent his only begotten son while I was yet in my sins. Christ died. When somebody's been that good to you, you ought to show your gratitude. Hallelujah. You know, it reminds me, there were 10 lepers that came to Jesus. And the scripture says he told them to go and show them, themselves to the priest. And there was a reason for that because when you go back under the Old Testament law, it was the priest that had to inspect the people as well as the offerings to, to see whether they were clean or unclean. Amen. So Jesus told these men who had leprosy to go and show themselves to the priest. And the scripture says, as they went, they all were cleansed. And the Bible says, there was one when he saw he was cleansed, he turned back to come and say thank you. And Jesus said, were there not ten that were cleansed? Where are the nine? Because only one returned to say thank you. Come on. Y'all not talking to me. Praise God. Amen. And we see in that particular of scripture that there was one out of the ten a tithe that returned to tell Jesus thank you and the other nine continued on amen talking about the ugliness of ungratefulness hallelujah and this is what you see in the house of God because it was prophesied by the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy, I believe in chapter 3. He said, in the last days perilous times shall come, many would become unholy and unfaithful. And this is what you see in the house of God. This is why people don't exalt the name Jesus. This is why people don't praise God like they know they can praise him. Come on, somebody. They just go through the motions and give God a pity pat. And they think they've done something. They think they've done something because they sing a song. But notice the way they sing a song. They can't praise God the way they sing a song. When they ain't got the mic in their head. Come on, somebody. Again, the text reads in First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 29. He said, Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. There go that word again. Amen. Give. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. He said, Bring an offering and come before him. Did you see that? Amen. How many know you don't come before the king and don't bring him an offering? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't have no money, if you don't have a sacrificial monetary amen, offering, then you better bring a praise. You better bring a sacrifice of praise. Hello, somebody. Are you listening to me? If you don't come before the king empty-handed, talking about I'm a child of God, and yet you don't have nothing to give. Are you listening to me? He told the children of Israel, his covenant people, when you come before the king, you bring an offering. Hello? Y'all don't want to get with me tonight. 
Amen. When the text says Amen. what it says, give unto the Lord the glory, do unto his name, bring an offering, and come before him. Amen. Amen. Isn't that what David teaches us in Psalms chapter 100? Praise God. Listen to what the psalmist teaches us in this particular text. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord how? With gladness. Come on, somebody. Come before his presence with singing. Amen? Amen. What, what did the text say in 1 Chronicles chapter 16? Give unto the Lord the glory do unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Did you see that? You don't come empty-handed. Hallelujah. You don't come empty-handed. Over in Psalms chapter 100, again in verse 1, he said, make a joyful noise. And how many understand? The only way you can make a joyful noise, uh, you must be living a consecrated life, and you must spend time in the presence of God. Hello, somebody. Because it's a shame when we got people that name the name Jesus Christ uh, that's just making the noise, uh, but it ain't a joyful noise. Uh, hello, somebody. You can sit. Uh, they have not been in prayer. They have not been in the presence of God. They're just as dry. Uh, come on. They're just as lifeless. Uh, there ain't no anointing. There's no power. There's no substance. Uh, they just go through the motion. And you are disgracing the God of Israel. You're not honoring him as being a king. Hello, somebody. He said, serve the Lord how? With gladness. You come any other way, you will be escorted out of his courts. Are you listening? Amen. You will be escorted out of his courts. He says, serve the Lord with gladness. Everything you do, you're supposed to be glad. You're supposed to have joy. You're supposed to have a praise. Hallelujah. I don't care what you are doing. In your personal time, in your private time, God wants his people to be glad. To serve him with gladness. Come on, somebody. I know we have struggles in this life. Praise God, but how many know struggles can become victories? And God, through Christ Jesus, will give us the victory. Come on, somebody. He goes on to tell us in verse 3. He said, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Did you see that? Amen. What did it say in verse 2? Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. You're not coming empty-handed. You're not coming empty-handed. Amen. If you're going to come into his presence, you got to bring an offering. The high priest could Not coming in the house of God and they frown up and you know because it's prayer time. They should be frowned up because I don't feel like being here tonight. Glory to God. And though you don't feel like being here tonight, God has been so no good to you all day. Come on. You see how blinded we become? We become so blinded. All we can see is what we want to do and what we don't want to do. We become so spiritually out of touch of who God is and what God has done. Come on, somebody. And for that reason, we rob him of his glory. 
We refuse to give him what is due Amen. unto his name. Amen. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. See that? Amen. And into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth unto all generations. Come on to that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 29, he said, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. There's no other way you can truly worship God. When Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 4 and verse 24, he said, God is a spirit. Amen. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. When you worship in spirit and in truth, you are worshiping in the beauty of his holiness. You cannot worship the Father any other way. You can make all the noises you want, but until you fit the criteria, you're not a true worshiper according to Scripture. Come on, somebody. He said, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Did you see that? Amen. And that's what we would skip over right there. He said, fear before him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And this is one of the missing elements within the house of God. The fear of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let men say among the nation, the Lord reigneth. How many know that Jesus reigns? And he reigns forever and ever. Come on. Hallelujah. How many know that Jesus reigns? And he reigns forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, creation praises God. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Psalm 19 tells you the heavens declare the glory of God. Yes. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 32, the text said, Let the sea roar oh. and the fullness there. Let the fields rejoice. Look at that. Amen. And all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the woods sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to just the earth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Yes. And say ye, save us, O oh God, for our salvation. And gather us together and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Yes. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said amen and praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, turn it up a notch. It's time to pick it up a notch. Amen. It's time to shake that laziness off. It's time to shake all that unbelief off. Come on, somebody. I know we go through trials and tribulations. I know we struggle here and there. But through it all, the Lord reigneth. And it's still to be worshipped. He's still worthy to give a shot to. He's still worthy to scoop your hands. He's still worthy to leap into Dana's praise God. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? In Jesus' name. 
Praise God. See, one thing people have forgotten in this modern day apostate church is that praise brings heaven down to you. Because he don't want heaven to come down. Oh, he don't want God to open up the floodgates of heaven. He don't want us to be blessed indeed. And that's why he fights us. You know, we get so caught up with ourselves. We get so caught up with what we're going through. Praise God. We model the sad face most of the time. We want sympathy from this sister and from that brother. We want people to inquire what's wrong. Hallelujah. And all we're really doing is showing our unbelief and how weak we are in the faith. Come on, somebody. Praise God. And I come to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, it's time to mature. It's time to grow up. It's time for you to come up from where you were. Because God has more for you. But it's not just about God having more for you. It's about you having more to give to God. Come on tonight. Are you listening to me? It's about you having more to give to God. Come on. Amen. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he'll lift you up. Boastful in the flesh. He's going to lift you up that you might proclaim his name. Praise God. Come on. Does this make sense? Amen. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Are you listening? I come to tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful time for the saints. It's a wonderful time for the saints. We live in a day where churches have shut down all over the place. We live in a day where people no longer come to the house of prayer. We live in a day now where people are weary, worn and sad. We live in a day now where people are sitting in the shadows where the reason of death come on somebody it's time for the sense of God to shine the light to shine the light to show up from day to day the salvation of the God of Israel come on somebody Find it in the, 
in the alcohol bottle they can't find it in the in the drugs that are being dispensed praise god all over the nation they can't find an answer with the psychiatrist praise god they can't find it with the witch doctor they can't find it at the local hospital hallelujah and we got to understand that the god of israel amen he has all power and he wants to move miraculously in the lives of his people to bring healing and deliverance and peace to their troubled minds. Come on, somebody. Praise God. But are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price to become a sanctified vessel prepared for the master's use? Praise God. The scripture says, Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen. His marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. For all he also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, you kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Now I want you to know that the enemy is going to fight you. He's going to fight you. Because you heard this message tonight. You understand what God wants. And what he desires to do in and through his people, even in these last days. So the enemy is going to turn the heat up and he's going to fight you. So you can never be in position for God to pour out his spirit so that he might use you greatly in this end time hour. So he's going to fight you. Amen. He's going to fight your mind. Amen. You're going to be attacked in a greater measure by the enemy through people. And you got to recognize the nature of the battle. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. So understand, you're going to come under attack because the enemy don't, don't ever want you to be in position to be used by God. Amen. Come on. Amen. He want to keep you in a state of complaining and boo-hooing about everything. He want to keep you in that place where all you do is look weary, worn, and sad all day, every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And yes, you're going to have some, some, some struggles. You're going to have some fightings within, some fightings without. Yeah. Yes, you're going to go through all those things. But through it all, what did the apostle say? He said, but thanks be unto God Hallelujah. who always causes us to triumph through our Lord Jesus Christ. So no matter what trial or tribulation, what struggle, no matter what you're going through, you can overcome every one of those trials and tribulations. You can overcome every struggle that comes your direction. And they all are nothing more but a test. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. And God wants us to overcome these things so that we can be in the place that he desires for us to be. So that we can be anointed and meet for the masters he's prepared unto every good work. Praise God. How many understand what we're talking about? Hallelujah. How many want to be a giver? How many know? 
you haven't given anything until you gave all. Amen. How many remember uh, the parable of the two mites? Amen. The scripture said there was a woman, she had what? She had what? Two mites, right? And she came and put it in the offering. And then there were some others. They was kind of wealthy. And they gave possibly hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And Jesus asked the question to his disciples, which do you think gave the most? Well, of course, with their carnal mind, yeah. They said, I suppose the one who gave the most. Yeah. But Jesus said, no. Mm -hmm. See, see, God's ways is not our ways. Right. His right. thoughts is not our thoughts. Right. First Samuel chapter 16, God said, the Lord don't see as a man sees. Right. Amen? Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, that woman that gave the two mites gave more than all of them. Right. Because she gave all that she had. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She gave all. Yes. Do you not know that's what God wants us to do? Mm -hmm. He wants you to give all. Right. If you're not loving God with all, you're not loving Him. That's right. You're not loving Him. If you're not loving Him with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind, you're not loving. That's right. If you're if you just going through the motions of praise, you're not loving. Amen. You know why? Because your heart is not there. Yes. Just like the Pharisees. They honor God with their mouth. They drew nigh to him with their lips. But what? Their heart was far from him. See, that's what we see today. People's heart is somewhere else. They give more attention to other things. That's where their heart is. That's what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. Where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is also. Amen? Amen. And that's why people don't love hard. They don't love Jesus hard. Because that's not where their heart is. You want to know where their heart is? Watch what they're interested in more. Watch what they're passionate over more. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Watch what gives them the, the giggles more. Amen. They'll show you where their heart is. <coughs> hmm? Amen. They'll show you exactly where their heart is. And God already knows. Because he searches the reins of the heart. He already knows. Come on, somebody. That's why you can't pity pat through this. You can't just appear to give it, but you're really not giving it. I'm going through something, and that, that's, the, that's become one of the most famous phrases in the Christian church. I'm going through. Folks are always going through, but we are always going through. When you don't think I'm going through something, I'm going through something I ain't complaining about. I'm just going to go through it. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. I'm going to let God cut some things out of me that he wants to cut out of me. I'm going to let him shape me and mold me the way he desires. Come on. I'm going to let him expose some things within my own life that I don't see myself so that I might repeat and walk in the ways of righteousness all the rest of the days of my life. You know I always go through and that's become the most famous line in the Christian church. I'm going through something. Amen. That means they want a pity party. Amen. Amen. When you ought to tell them, be encouraged. I'm praying for you. I'm praying with you. Be encouraged. Now, I can't, I can't waste all my oil on you. Because I got to say something for me. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. The five wise girls you said, we amen. They say, go, you got to go by your own as we not have enough for ourselves and you. Come on. I got to say something for me. I need, amen. I'm going to go through. Amen. I need the oil. I need the oil to worship. I need the oil to keep my flesh under subjection. I need the oil. I need the oil for everything. I can't 
can't give it all to you and I'm left with nothing. Come on, somebody. Do that make sense? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give it to the neighbor and say, Give unto the Lord. You got to give it to him. He wants it again. Don't be, don't, when it comes to God, don't ever be selfish. Don't ever hold back. Because if you hold back, he has a way of getting it from you. Oh, yeah. He has a way of getting it from you. Don't ever hold back. Don't hold back your praise. Because God will God let you get it. He'll let you get in a situation like Jonah. I bet you give it up then. Did Jonah give it up? Did he give it up? So you better go and give it up freely. Because you don't want to put you in a Jonah experience. For him to get it out of you like that. Can you imagine the horror of being in the ocean? And this humongous whale come and swallow you up. But yet, he don't chew on you because no. God wouldn't let him. Yeah. God said, I want you to just capture him for me and hold him. Yeah. And the whale did just that. Huh? See, God controls everything. Amen. Amen. He controls the winds yeah. and the waves. Yeah. Even the beasts Obey him. Huh? Amen. He controlled everything. Yes. 